thing could have been avoided. I mean, my messy death. If only a few people had done what decent human beings should do, and if only I had double-checked something I took for granted. So, you get a good story, and I end up dead. That's me, Agatha J. Ruby, Mammothville's top-ranking rubber-tubber saleswoman. I had a pretty good life and a very complicated death. <sighs> Staying in shape has always been important to me. To me, it just reflects the positive attitude of clean body, clean mind. And it helps when you're out in the field hosting a party and a woman asks you, you're in such good shape. How do you find time to do it all? And I can answer by cutting my time in the kitchen in half, by staying organized and efficient before, during, and after cooking for my family. I have plenty of time to fit in an hour of aerobics when I organize my life using plastic storage. I guess some people could say I got a rotten deal. But let's start at the beginning. probably want to know how it happened. Well, it was pretty horrific, as horrific things go. The police said the probable motive was simple human greed. Over $6,500 worth of my best plastic storage ware was discovered missing. Sure is thick of them. Yeah. It's rainy season. Any evidence of random wildlife attack like you first thought? Heck no, this is man-made, not animal. Gunshot to the right temporal lobe. You know what kind of gun yet? Still checking. She put up a heck of a fight. How do you know? Well, take a look. Someone had to break each one. That takes time. Someone in a mighty bad mood. Beat her up first, then shoot her. That's a pissy mood, all right. Someone mean. Maybe somebody with some sort of grudge against her. Looks like she was trying to defend her rubber tubbers. See here? A fight to the death over plastic storage. These crimes of passion are usually by people known to the deceased. And Aggie here was known by pretty much the whole darn village. <laughs> Didn't really know her that well. Me and Kellen just moved here from Spokane not more than five months back. I mean, we palled around and whatnot. Like of all people, I just never expected that. Meet June and Kelton Bass. Conniving, manipulative sales rivals of mine. I'm sorry, I guess it's just too soon for me. Her body's so fresh. Since taking over this case for the state, I can tell you, it's a bit unusual. Very seldom is there a whodunit in a bush village. And typically in a bush village, everyone knows exactly who killed who. Usually booze is involved. We go in, 
put it together as quickly as we can, and in a day or two, we're out of there. This is Erica Erickson, the fledgling homicide detective assigned to my case. Maggie's dream <laughs> was to be the top-ranking rubber tubber saleswoman, to be the best manager in our region, in our territory, even in the country. This is Sally Simpson Kanger, my two-faced sister-in-law. She's Mammothville's second leading rubber tubber saleswoman. At one point, I was working 80 hours a week in the name of rubber tubber. And at first, I was loving it. She moved up pretty quickly, too, from uh, consultant to unit manager to executive manager, all within a few short years. You know, I think there was even talk amongst the regional bigwigs of promoting her to uh, Ben Hunt's position. Agatha Ruby will always be remembered as our top dog salesperson for the Northwest. She had guts, cunning, drive, not the kind of drive you need to succeed in, in this cutthroat business, darn it. This is not a career for, for weaklings or, or slackers or, or folks who can't handle the regular rigors of, of, of nine of fiving it. Agatha was a trooper, a, a tank, a, a ballistic missile, a thermonuclear warhead, a blasted napalm in the morning, noon, and night. This is Ben Hecht, my painfully neurotic boss. <laughs> That's what she was. <laughs> I realize most people here in Mammothville knew me for what I did. The kind of gives Romeo a run for his money. Knew me as the top ranking rubber tubber saleswoman. The kind that just makes you go a I just wish that while I was alive, they could have let go of my saleswoman mystique and seen me for who I was, underneath all that. And it just light up your whole gosh darn day. She was just outgoing, my Aggie. She'd bust through the door and say, good morning, Dad. If I hadn't married Fred, and if I hadn't had Flo and Elias, I don't think being a saleswoman would have meant very much to me at all. Wait, 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 wait. I'll stay with her. No way, are you kidding? We'll be prime suspects. Not if we didn't do anything. Come on. No, I want to stay with her. I think we should stay. when I met her, darn it. But I know. She was always the mature one, Sally. I was the one who didn't know how to handle things. What a lughead I was. Oh, I know. It's all gonna be okay, Fred. You'll see. <laughs> Thing that was important to Aggie. Oh, 
was the quality and breadth of her merchandise. <laughs> she was a real stickler for matching just the right container to just the right need. <laughs> She'd be able to bring tears of laughter to your eyes. <laughs> One of her devilish off-color jokes. She was just a, a good egg that way, you know? One of those rare birds. <laughs>
thing that was important to Aggie was her family. This is Ginger Lundman, my archly competitive sister. Ginger feels she was completely ignored by our mom, who instead doted over my many fruitful accomplishments. I mean, of course, Robert Tubbers was important. I mean, no one's denying that. But uh, Aggie had the foresight, the common decency to put first things first. Well, her kids, little Floriana and Elias. <laughs> okay, and lift, and tuck and cover, and seal. <laughs> Very good, honey. I mean, the fact that I had kids first, I mean, legitimate kids, that really busted her chops somewhat. <laughs> Ma was always asking me to, you know, go over to her house, help her get a private life in order. I never wanted to do that. I'm not like that. Sure, you know, you have, you have no problem saying that now here in the privacy of your kitchen, but you would never call me a total loser if Mom and Dad were in the room, would you? No. I think not. I know that deep down, she admired me. I know she did. Oh, now you want me to relax. You know, a second ago, you wouldn't get off my ass for relaxing too much. About how many vacations Elmer, me, and the kids take every year. I don't know, I never finished cosmetology school. Please. Oh, but you. You got your precious little sales certificate right out of high school, and you never looked back. Aggie had her own way of doing things. I respect that. Today's Agatha Ruby homicide update, coroner's preliminary reports indicate a partially digested tuna sandwich was found in the stomach of murder victim Agatha Ruby. For your copy of Agatha's acclaimed tuna surprise recipe, visit the station's website today. And now back to you, Gabby. Yeah, I remember her selling fifty thousand pieces of the course of three hours. A village and regional record. First woman on the village council. Best homemade bread loaves using the herb allspice. She really stood for something. I want to be like that when I'm older. Sure you do, honey. We all do, gosh darn it. <laughs>
Some key evidence was stolen. Mr. Kanger sustained several injuries and is recovering in a local clinic. His attacker remains at large. You know, this whole murder thing really sucks the big one in terms of timing. How so, Ben? Well, you know, what would it be in November already? We're backlogged with Christmas orders from here to eternity. Come on, it can't be that bad. And this was one of Aggie's top grossing months. June ready for that sort of business? You know, see the Wheaties this week? Hey, June's been playing this for months. <laughs> I mean, ever since Agatha's death. What? Well, even before anything happened to Aggie, June's been looking to increase her regional pool. This is her big chance, Ben. Agatha's already gone, God bless her. Let's not throw out the bathwater with a dead baby, shall we? I mean, God works in some pretty mysterious ways. What are those? New rifles? Yeah, I just got these last month. Going hunting so late in the no, season? No, I'm just looking for a place to keep them out of the way, you know, so the kids don't get in them because, you know, accidental deaths have been on the rise lately, and I, I don't want to take chances, not with them anyway. Yeah. Well, uh... Maybe you're right about June taking over Aggie's <laughs> orders until we find someone else. Well, what do you mean, someone else? Oh, what I mean is we're probably going to promote Sally to the position. Sally? Sally frickin' Kanger? What kind of nepotism is that? Well, then, if, uh, if you want June to have the slot, are you willing to get in there and sell with her? Split our commissions? Are you crazy? I just don't want you home alone. Not with this killer running around loose. So instead of out there measuring drain pipes, I'm gonna be right here, sorting and packing and mailing out storage container orders with you. It's fine with me, Kelton. How much you figure her collection would have fetched on the open market? In conservative or healthy figures? Healthy. 6,500 to 7,900 easy? No way. Remember, she had not only the whole fall and holiday lines of crystal wear, oven wave, and freezer wave, but she had several sets of expression serving wear and an incredible array of cooler-made storage pieces. Those items alone are worth close to $6,500 in the open market. Jeez. I hear ya. Food storage is a burgeoning market as we head into the new millennium. I wasn't able to get as close as I wanted to, to my friends and my neighbors. And it's because the whole sales force in Mammothville became so ultra-competitive. I didn't want any of our sales work to become more important than our lives here. I mean, it's just sales, for goodness sakes. I think when I was alone with Flo, just a single mom, I think we were much closer then. I miss those times. Hmm. One day, Aggie just confessed to me that she'd fallen in love with Fred. <laughs> Just like that, falling in love. <laughs> I'm expecting. You're expecting what? I'm expecting. Holy cow, I, I thought you were using, you know, I, I thought uh, we were protected. I feel sick. And, um, one thing led to another, and they became inseparable. <laughs> Fred just left. He's been coming home late all the time. Won't say where he's been. Are you having an Are you seeing someone, Fred? Huh? Wait, <laughs> no, no way, Aggie. Where in the hell do you get that? That's what I don't get is how you can get from C to A without going through H in that convoluted mind of yours. Look, um, I, I do not have a convoluted mind. My mind is as clear as a bell. Here. Why don't you go eat your lunch with the guys? Because I don't give a damn. It was the end of September, early October, I think, and I went over to visit her because she had just gotten a new shipment in. And Aggie was like, oh my god, oh my god, Dot. Fred was just in here a second ago calling me all kinds of 
dirty, ugly names and, and threatening my life. When she was just shaking like a wet kitty cat, just beside herself with, with terror and fear. I told her to keep notes about their arguments, his late night drunken sprees. Told her to start a diary. Hell no, I'm not jealous. I don't know why you have to get so hostile. I know, it's in your blood. I am not trying to demean the benefits of long-term storage. I just think that no matter what words you use, it still seems unfair for you to have a hobby and me not to. I know I should be happier. I, I know it. I'm, I'm just not. And, and I can't go against how I feel. Well, now you have every right to feel down. This divorce is dragging every bit of your normally bright energy from you. And it's a darn shame. I mean, everybody was right. That Fred was too young and that he was too immature to handle a marriage with someone like me, someone much older, and, and that he couldn't handle fathership to Floriana either. Look, he was able to take on fatherhood. He was talking about it even before you two got serious. And furthermore, he asked me what I thought of him taking on that role. And with you. What did you say? Well, I told him to do what he thought was right for him. No, you're wrong. I do want to stay. I want us to stay together. I want this to work. And what about your drinking? I know I have to work on that. You're a good man, Fred Ruby. You are. I can't accept this. What? Why? Yeah, why? Well, simply put, Fred's not getting enough in this divorce. He deserves more than this. He did put seven years of his life into this marriage. Yeah, no one's arguing that. Uh, but I was the one with the full-time job, keeping food and water on the table. Satellite dishes hooked up in the yard. ESPN2 on every night. Flat TV before it even hit the market. Now, nah, Aggie, we talked about getting those things way before you spent your savings on them. The house I bought. Everything we own. Look, I gave you a kid. Helped you raise one wasn't even mine. Don't go there, Frederick Ruby. Besides, I had a job during that time. During some of that time, anyway. I still think he deserves more than his clothes, records, and the sports pennants hanging on the wall. <sighs> OK, all right. You know, I, I didn't know this was going to be such a chain gang lynching. I'll toss in the satellite dish. Are you satisfied? I'll take what I can get at this point. She asked me if I wanted her to get back with Fred. I said, sure, if that's what she wanted. But still, I thought he was too immature for this marriage thing to ever work. She didn't ask me. I'm too young to have an opinion. Look, I gave you a kiss. You got your precious little sales certificate right out of high school, and you never looked back. If she's really had her fill, we should just let her quit. No way. I want my Astro Band. Too many customers for me to cover without a slacking off. For the first time in my life, I was thinking about leaving Mammotville. Why not write a book? A book? Well, not just any book, the rights to Aggie's life story, you know? Something cathartic, something that'll get this town back on its feet after something this horrible happens. Honey, I think we need to settle into our own particular ways of grieving. That's my opinion. Beloved housewife, an innocent victim, slashed down in the prime of a rubber tubber's life. Hot dog, it'll be a bestseller. I can see it now. Photos for my Ma's family album. Chapters about Aggie's days as a Girl Scout. A cheerleader. And me. As her undervalued but promising younger sister, destined to blossom out from underneath her shadow someday. 
Ginger, it'll be a snap. I'll make a fortune. Ginger, I don't think it's right capitalizing off your beloved sister's memory like a cheap news story on E. Think about our feelings. About your parents' feelings. The feelings, Shmeelings. Aggie would have wanted it that way. I mean, she was the epitome of commercialization. Honey, you're just temporarily overcome due to your complex feelings of loss and abandonment. What do you mean? You got Oprah's private home number. You got a psychic hotline to the stars. You in with Sally, Jesse, Raphael, what? I have to go to the bathroom. Why are you raining cats and dogs on my parade, huh? I'm better than her, Hillary. I've always been better than her. You'll see. Sally, I want to apply for that open position as regional sales manager in the next territory over. What? No. No. No, you don't. God, what about your life here? Oh, I can sort it out there. With Fred being out of our lives, it's just me and the kids anyway. No more of his drunken antics or his late nights with that harlot, that, that bartender at the Dewdrop Inn. It's... I'm not going to let you go. What do you mean you won't let me? Just what I said. And how are you going to stop me? Sally Simpson Kanger, we've known each other since we were old enough to walk. I'm going to tell Fred to stop no, you. No, you won't. Look, Sally, I got to get out of here. What do you mean? I told Detective Erickson about it, about Aggie being scared of being dragged into something she couldn't hand handle. But I really can't say anything more about it. Mammetville PD. Um, yes, well, I, I can't say my name, but I have an idea about who this rubber tubber jacker is you're looking for. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Well, okay, well, I remember this family, the Gunk family, and they had this violent son, Abel. Well, and he doesn't live in town anymore, but a bunch of people here know him. I realized I'd finally figured a way out of my situation. I met up with Abel Gunk. Anyway, Abel Gunk only lived in town for about a year. He and his whole Gunk family, all of them living in that one tiny little place together. Ugh. Apparently, this guy Gunk had a fondness for violence. He was convicted of several counts of aggravated assault. Back in the 80s, he was put on probation after he busted into the local Catholic church and stole the chalice and the sacrament. And, I mean, go figure, the boy was a Lutheran. He's a very different kind of person, if you know what I mean. His whole family, they're not like us. He could walk the entire 70 miles from Esther to Mammotville in a few days. Well, it takes a good man four or five days to do it, up and down over rolling forested hills and meandering rivers and stuff. Somebody from the city would probably die trying. Probably. Probably. Well, we'll check him out, Miss Kanger. But since he's not even from around this town, I really don't see the connection. Well, you're questioning everyone, aren't you? Isn't that the only way to get at the horrible truth behind this senseless murder? Now, I say you check him out. Him and his whole gunk family. More jello surprise? You got everything, honey bun? Yeah. <clears throat> Two airline tickets, first class, one hotel reservation, under assumed names. One car rental with air conditioning, waiting for us at the airport in Honolulu. Now, you threw away all your lipsticks in that burnt sienna color? Yeah, I got them all. A police warning is still in effect for all residents of Mammothville. An armed rubber tubber jacker has been spotted in the area. What's that? Residents should maintain... Oh, jeez, Louise. Damn, we're in the line of fire! I gotta see, for Christ's sakes. How else am I gonna save us from this infidel from hell? Well, just don't do it by getting us both killed! Miss Kanger, first of all, <clears throat> he's likely dead by now. Secondly, dead people don't murder. Plus, if someone just walked through miles and miles of some of the meanest tundra you've ever seen, he's not going to kill the first person he comes across, now is he? They say Gunk could walk 70 miles of woods and hills, that he did it for hunting trips like that. 
Plus, even if he is dead, maybe his spirit's looking for company. Maybe he sent someone to kill Aggie for him. Some innocent bystander or something. I'll make a note of that. Getting nowhere, Betty. Nowhere? What do you mean nowhere? I got people being shot at, rubber tubber jackings going out of style, people who won't talk for fear of losing their lives, <laughs> and some folks are seeing the ghost of Aggie in the wee hours. I need some help. Just hang tight, Detective Erickson. Guy are sending down this new guy, a guy from the Bureau. That special agent, Reed Elvin? <laughs> Reed Elvin, the FBI's best kept secret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just what is this guy's deal, Kyer? He's a special agent, FBI, exclusive crimes division. Oh, uh, get out of town. No, nah, really, Scout's honor. He's an expert in sussing out the truth. Sort of like a human lie detector. You can smell a lie a million paces away. Uh -huh. He's got a knack for foul play issues. Should see him in action. It's like a racehorse. Yep, yep, it's true. Aggie had it. She was one of those American test families, like the Nielsen families, only they test the future of television. New inventions. Right. You were saying, Mrs. Bass? Anyway, she loved her flat TV. Right. Had people over to watch Nick at Night on it. Now that's a real hoot. And where were you both on the morning of the deceased demise? Well, I was doing laundry down at the In and Out. Oh. Are you okay? What, Aggie, what, what happened? happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Oh my gosh, are you okay? Help me. You're gonna be okay, Aggie. Just hang on, okay? I'm not. Is that you? We'll be back. We're gonna get some help. What? We'll be back. Wait, 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 wait. I'll stay with her. Someone should stay with her. No way. Are you kidding? If she croaks, we'll be prime suspects. Not if we didn't do anything. Don't you watch the practice? Come on. I'm going to sneak with her. Get in the car. It was horrible. Can anyone else verify your story? Sure. Well, no, not, not really. really. <laughs> we, we were alone at the laundromat that morning. Yeah. She was more skittishy than a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Well, we're all a bit skittish. What else would you say was remarkable about Miss Caperlog's comments? Remarkable? Remarkable. Well, she's darn set that one of us offed Aggie for a chance at that coveted territorial manager position and the Dodge Caravan. That's a $40,000 cash value, you know. Uh, I'm aware of that. Uh, you were saying about Miss Caperlog's recent mood swings? Yeah. Look, that isn't our problem, is it? We can't help it if you're too nice to your customers to make any decent sale. Nice never helped no one, did it? Nice never helped Willie friggin' Loman. But that's precisely why I'm getting out of the business. Nice works better for me. Oh, give me a friggin' break, Mary Tootsie Poppins. I mean, wouldn't that just send you a little over the edge, detective? But we could surmise that that was the last to see poor Aggie alive. I mean, the dream was simple, to get married and have more kids. As you can see, we not all of us have our priorities in the same place. We had a screaming match you could hear around the block. And Hillary quit that night. That's just saying that the air between them was cordial after that. Sick to death of all the competitiveness. Sales is not for the meek detective. So, Special Agent Reed, you're a human lie detector. What's your vibe? It's murky. Reed realizes his sinuses could be costing him his reputation. He's decided to call his allergist first thing in the morning. Owning significant amounts of rubber tubby storage ware on the 
advised to take whatever precautions are necessary and to alert local officials of any suspicious activities. In other news, local high will be hosted. I drove myself crazy those first few days after Aggie died. My mom kept telling me to quit torturing myself, but I just kept asking myself, did I miss something? Did I, did I, did I hear something I shouldn't have? Did I repeat something I shouldn't have? I'm confident the truth will come out sooner or later. Community this size, Somebody always talks. Sooner or later. Ben, you're back to my dream place. Ethan? Did you install the deadbolt on the back and side doors yet? No. No, Miss Dunleavy. No! What do you mean, no? What the heck are you waiting for, Christmas? Probably won't have time to install all this beefed up security you got here on this list, even before Washington's birthday. Why the heck not? Yes, you will. Hanging around the smoking cheese cars. Now, don't give me any lip. We've got a lot of stuff to do on that list. Yes, ma'am. Trying to pull another jacket. Shot in the tank, though. Oh, just a dog, huh? Found a bag on him full of uh, I got a phone call, don't stolen I? goods. Stuff checks out as Agatha Rubies. Shoot, no kidding. You got nothing on me. Yeah, found a weapon on him, too. We'll run ballistics on that right away. Same kind used in the uh, Ruby homicide and in a kanger beating. I'll be right on. I gotta call a lawyer, don't I? This is repeat offender Jelby Gritz who served three years with parole for burglary and grand theft plastic storage. OK, so just tell me that again, would ya? I'm sorry, detective, but it's like I said. I checked it over and over, and the results are the same. Ms. Ruby didn't die from this guy's bullet. It just grazed her head, probably a sloppy accident. She died from other causes we're still checking out. So you're telling me that this bullet matches up to this guy's gun, it's just that the bullet didn't kill her. Is that it? Afraid so. We've got to keep looking. Hello? Mayor Tripp? Detective Eric. We booked this drifter fella for armed robbery and assault. That's all we got so far. Sorry, I got no other news. Don't let it ruffle your chicken house one nanosecond longer. But I thought the whole town was shooting out each other's windows. I'm throwing a little soiree at my place, and everyone's invited. I think if we're all together in the backyard, by the pool, with good food, no one can get shot. Oh, it's good. 
good to see you. Glad you could make it. Whispering like that? Mm. Did you see that? Come on, come on. And I was just starting to like Doc. Mm. I'll take him. Watch her. Stay here. Stolen vehicle. What? He's fleeing the scene. Betty, I need some backup out here. I'm in pursuit of this here stolen Toyota pickup. Southbound on Coyote Creek approach of Mill Road. Send me all units in the vicinity, please. I says I was involved in the demise of that young gal, Agnes, was it? It's Agatha, sir, not Agnes. Would you please state your name? Name's Abel Gunk, son of Josiah Gunk, brother of uh, Harold Manikai, and Aaron Gunk, mom deceased. God rest her soul. Okay. This is the infamous Abel Gunk. It's very good, sir. And where do you live? Over there, 70 miles. <sighs> okay, Mr. Gunk, it's going along real good. It is, but you see, if you point or make gestures with your head, our trusty transcribers, they can't see what you're doing on this here tape. And that just makes things way too... Scrambly. That's right, scrambly. <laughs> so just be a bit more, well, elaborate in your sentences. Uh, Abel Gunk here in his best Sunday clothes. Uh, anyway, uh, in response to your interrogatory about my living quarters, I reside in a small outback domicile, approximately 70 miles or 112.63 kilometers, south-southeast of here, in a little hunting village called Este. You're referring to the next county over to Marlin County, Mr. Gunk? Said no gestures. I can vouch for him. State your name for the record, sir. Caprolog, Ethan Caprolog, Hunter, for a trapper local grocer. And you say you know the suspect. Oh, yeah, I've known Abel for about... 10 years or so. When you say about 10 years, Abel? Yeah, yeah, ever since that, that, that wild black bear attacked me. Remember that? Oh, do I ever. You are all black and blue and bruised over for a week at least. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell us if we could keep to the present day matters. Oh, right, right, where was I? You, you were saying you know me. All right, uh, well, like I said, I've known the gunks for 10 years or so. Nice folk, them gunks. Sorry to hear about your ma, Abel. That's okay, thanks. How do you know them, sir, in what capacity? Oh, in a friendly one. Well, that is until the murder and armed robbery charge went down. I can explain. No, no, no. I, I delivered uh, groceries and supplies to them and whatnot in return for uh, furs and taters. Did you ever try any of their taters, Miss Erickson? No, of course not. Not around here. Well, you're missing something really special, you are. Abel, he just went off the deep end or something. Maybe in the past couple of years, I didn't spend that much time with him. But last year, he did lose his favorite cat, old Joe. He was really attached to that cat. I hate to say it, but I told them so. This was my thought all along. Abel Gunk. All along. Can I get a sandwich? All things being equal, Abel should have just told the truth at his arrest. But everyone, Abel included, is trying to avoid responsibility for what really happened. Don't bamboozle us, Gunk. What about this suicide note? Well, she wrote that. It's a, it's a ruse. A ruse? Yeah, it's a it's a simple ruse, I admit, but a ruse nonetheless. She was gonna gonna uh, send for the kids incognito. She sent them new identities for them. She's been planning this thing for about 
About two years. Don't try and stop me. I can't go on without Fred. And with all my friends, I have to steal my thriving business at every turn. I'm ending it all. And not a moment too soon. Agatha J. Ruby. What are you telling us, Gunk? That this is the thing that'll get you off the hook, huh? That we should be offering you leniency because you were just helping out a little old housewife from up the block who ran into hard times? What do you think we're running here, Gunk? The Daisy Hill Puppy Farm? Ow! By now, Abel and I had hammered out the rest of our plan. Abel was gonna take me and my rubber tubbers and we were gonna hike deeper into the woods and cross the woods between Mammothville and Esther. And from there, I was gonna take the bus up to Scouts Glen under my assumed name. I told Abel to wait until after all the commotion died down before he even thought about kidnapping the kids and stealing them out of town to meet me. Abel! Okay. You know what to do? Yep. Make sure everyone thinks you're dead and deliver this note to your sister-in-law, Sal. Thanks, Abel. No problem. Hey, Abel. My stomach's kind of queasy like. Do you got any acid? Checking my truck. It's okay. Maybe I'll feel better after my run. Everybody said that it was too far fetched, but I knew nobody in this town could have done something like <laughs> like this. Excuse me. Honey, look at this. It's not postmarked. It's too bad heft. Think we should open it? It's a ransom note. Oh my gosh. So exciting, so exciting. Don't go off half cocked there, little woman of mine. We still got some particulars to work out. Now, here's what, Joby. You get half up front, and then half upon completion of the kidnapping. Huh? Half and half. Now, once we take possession of the hostage. That's Agatha J. Ruby. That's right. <laughs> then and only then do you take possession of the other half of your $10,000. Like you said. I grab her tomorrow morning after her workout. Meet you afterwards. One more thing. Make sure she's unconscious. Oh, and that she's blindfolded. Before transporting her to the hideout location. Yeah, before. Because we don't want her IDing you or pointing fingers at us or anything. Mm -mm. Mm. You want me to knock her out and keep her knocked out, is that right? Whatever it takes, old man. Just uh, tread lightly, huh? Yeah, make sure she's alive. <laughs> Otherwise, our whole plan is all Jane no fizz. You got it? You took care of the ransom note. Yep, sent a priority mail to old Ben Heft, just like we said. Are you sure this is lipstick, honey? Yes, and I recognize the shade. There's only one woman in Mammothville who wears burnt sienna. Now, you threw away all your lipsticks in that burnt sienna color? Yeah, I got them all. Let's call the police. You've reached the office of Detective Erica Erickson. Can't take your call right now, so leave a message at the tone, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Detective Erickson, this is Kelton Bass. 
We, we just got a package that was supposed to go to uh, Ben Heft. It says that Agatha's alive. I think it's some kind of ransom note. Make sure you get over here as soon as you can. If you're there, can you pick up Detective Erickson? I didn't know if I could really do it. I was having so many doubts by then. But I knew I couldn't bear staying in Mammothville. I decided I had to do one last thing that matched my old routine before I left. I decided to do my run, just like always, on my last day there. Who are you, pervert? No, no, I fled. When I saw her throw up, and uh, uh, I pass out, I got scared. I freaked. No! <laughs> oh, jeez. Abel! Abel! I gotta, I gotta get out of here. Abel! That drifter you caught, he must have come along just after I left. He must have struggled. She never would have given up her rubber tub of stock without a good fight.
This is Kelton Bass. Oh, we just got a package over here um, that was supposed to go to Ben Heft. I think it's some kind of ransom note. If you're there, can you pick up Detective Erickson? Hey, so I admit it. It, it was a crazy idea, you know, arranging my sister's kidnapping for a lousy couple hundred thousand dollars. So kick me, okay? I mean, she wanted some time away. I mean, how could it hurt? How was I supposed to know that the post office would mess it up with the wrong address and late delivery? Hey, detective, I need you pronto. We've got new evidence. Reed finally got the right allergy shot, and it cleared up his sinuses. And with that, he returned to the scene of my death. Uh, yeah, man. There's been a rubber tub of death here, all right. Whoa. And there, Reed discovered the one suspect no one had suspected. The killer no one thought to blame. Yes, my beloved Rubber tubbers. Food poisoning from improper storage was the real culprit. So, what did I learn from all this? I suppose I could be bitter about it. But I'm not. Even though. Oh my God! Set the car. Is that Agatha Murphy on the ground? Oh. I would have survived the food poisoning. You're gonna be okay. If I'd just gotten prompt medical attention. We'll be back. Please. Please. Of course, the shock to my system from that bullet wound sure didn't help. Oops. But that could have been avoided no. <laughs> if Abel had just stepped in to help. I gotta, I gotta get out of here. You coward. And I wouldn't have needed Abel's help if my sister hadn't set in motion her half-baked kidnapping scheme. <laughs> Yet, let's not forget, I was the one who wanted to get out of town with a new identity. I was the one who wanted a death for this saleswoman.
many people seek out rubber tubbers anymore. You know, now you got your uh, your storage mate and you're, you're living easy competing for market share. Of course, they're your uh, inferior brands. storage and range. It's just not compatible with my lifestyle. So beat up, gunk. You do that to her, you pervert? No, no, I fled. When I saw her throw up and then and then pass out, I, I got scared. I, I uh I, I freaked. That that uh that uh that uh uh that drifter that you picked oh. Gunk only lived in town for about a year. Well, this guy is not to be trusted. He's completely, uh, woo.
this guy, Gunk, had a fondness for violence. He was convicted of several counts of aggravated assault. Why, back in the 80s, he was... <sighs> Why, back in the 80s, he was busted after he busted into the... <sighs> Sorry. Here, why don't you go eat your lunch with the guys?